Well, the reality is you can't make a game engine that handles everything. No matter how hard you try, it's, it's an endless path. You still see the biggest engines being constantly updated, still trying to get there with giant teams. Even giant teams and billions of dollars can't quite get a generic game engine finished. So what makes you as a solo or duo developer think that you can make a game engine that does that? Don't forget to like and subscribe. The age old question, should you make a game or should you make a game engine? Most people that start to get into the make a game mindset or the, I want to be a game developer, or I want to make a game, I have to ask this question at some point. And what tends to happen that I've noticed is some of us that are more, I guess, developer centric, where we really like the code and the math behind it and the algorithms and understanding what's going on. We really seem to like to try to make a whole game engine and making a game almost seems too easy. Like we could just open a game engine and throw things together and it's going to get finished quickly, which isn't true. But for some reason we decide that, Hey, uh, I don't want to just use other people's stuff. I'd rather write my own. And basically I'm going to explain to you and try to convince you in this talk that that's, it's a bad idea to try to make a game engine. And well, if you're trying to make a game, it's a bad idea to try to make your own engine. And that you should basically use stuff that's already available. I'm sure there are people that have better examples than my personal examples, but my personal journey has also told me this. All right. So if you're going down this route where you want to be a developer, here's some things you should understand about game engines and about what you're going to get into. If you're going to try to create your own, well, first you should understand the core concepts of a game engine. That's pretty important because you need to know what you're getting into and what you're signing up for and what kind of time you'd be saving if you're using something that already has these done rather than have having to recreate and re-understand all these. And this is not an all inclusive list. This is actually what I would call a short list, the windowing. Well, windowing is not too hard on most OSs. Um, you can find guides for it. The input input usually kind of comes along with windowing. Uh, it's not super hard, but it can get pretty complicated when you're trying to like adapt things for first person or and stuff like that, or change the controls when you change scenes, it can, it can definitely get a little confusing uh, game objects. How do you, how are you going to handle your game objects? Now, this is something that I've debated a ton and I don't know the right answer for this. It seems like every engine has a different name for them or a different theory. Usually there's like an initial position node, and then you can attach more stuff to that. That's usually how it is, but not always. So how are you going to do it? That's something you're going to have to think about and understand if you're making your own engine. Cameras, you're going to support one, two, multiple, um, all the different projection styles. You can allow people to do whatever they want with them. There's a lot of stuff like that too. Are you going to start with a game object node and then call it a camera or is a camera its own separate thing? You got to decide and program that all up. If you're making them your own game engine physics, are you going to write your own physics, bring in an API? It's a pretty big thing and a pretty big commitment to have to program and set that all up. Uh, how are you going to do layers in your engine layers of graphics of UI of whatever it may be. That's another thing you have to think about, uh, the graphic APIs, how are you going to plug in DirectX, Vulkan or OpenGL or whatever you, you're using, you're going to have to set up that whole API. Whereas if you're using a game engine, it's just always, it's going to be already done basically. And shaders, are you going to support custom shaders? You're going to write your own. You're going to write all the lighting in the shaders and the shadowing and uh, the animations and handle all that. I've tried. It's hard. And uh, yeah, sound. You got to put that in there too. Every game needs sound. This And there's tons more. This is just like a short list off the top of my head, basically. So that's the kind of things you need to think about. If you're thinking about writing a game engine. These are the, these are the things you, you don't even have to really worry about too much. 
you're using a game engine just to make your game. So if you're just focused on making a game, you want to have all these available, but you don't want to have to take like a week or a month or whatever it may be to figure out the individual thing because you won't even be able to get started on your real thing, on your real project for a long time. And the next thing you should do, and this might be really obvious, I think it segues quite nicely, is you, you should start exploring some game engines. Now you can go on forums and, and talk to people on Discord and stuff and ask what for their opinion. And their opinion probably is pretty important because in theory they know more than you if you're just getting into this. But what these engines will show you is, well, they're all a little different and they all basically end up doing the same thing. You're going to work with position. You're going to work with vectors. You're going to work with potentially matrices. You're going to work with structures of data that gets changed and you're going to work with game states. Now, all these are not game engines. Uh, I know, you know, game maker studio is and unreal and Godot and unity are, but like processing is more for like making demos, um, with just graphics in general, not necessarily games. So it might be more for algorithms and stuff. And, and, but you can make games with stuff like that. So it's just another, another example of something to explore and see how they, they've done it. Once again, not an all inclusive list. There are tons more. Feel free to leave comments down below if you know of more good examples of any of these points. But yeah, this is just a super important thing you should do. You know, games aren't all that new of a thing anymore. They've been being made for a really long time. So there are a lot of people out there who have just been doing this for like their entire life at, at sometimes, and they have accumulated a lot of knowledge and a lot of them are somewhat eager to share it. It's like a lot of learning and you don't, you know, you don't just want to keep that in forever. Eventually you feel like you want to share. Most people do at least. So they'll talk about it. And I've provided a link here. It'll be in the description and down below, but it's a talk, uh, from a guy who's been doing this for a long time. And he basically goes through these rest of the points that are on this slide. He basically says you should prototype, you should make a game, not an engine. And that all engines are pretty bad. Now, uh, yeah, I found this to be very true. And one of the reasons I continue working on my own is yeah, there's no engines perfect. So you're not going to find the perfect engine and everything's going to suddenly work out. You're basically going to have to put in a lot of work no matter what. But if you're also trying to make the engine on top of the game, you also want to make, it's just so much more work. And really the bottom line to that is it's not an obtainable goal. It's like, you know, how every new dev, every new game dev is like, I'm going to change the world with this new MMO multiplayer, 10,000 people. And you know, have any of those ever happened? Not really at all. And generally engines come from games, not the other way around. So I encourage you to listen to this talk. It's very informative. It's pretty good. And, uh, I, I think it's kind of obscure. I haven't really seen it before. Well, we have one more point here and we've kind of already mentioned it, but this is super important and it's just really the crux that ties it all together. You know, making a game is also a massive commitment An engines bigger. A game's also huge. Um, so what is obtainable? And that is, well, a simple prototype. So that's what you actually do. You, you simply just don't make a game. Like if you're going to make a game now, there's exceptions to every rule, of course, but I'm thinking of kind of the solo indie dev or a new studio. You don't want to sink three years of your studio's time or your time and everything into something that is ultimately just going to flop. That feels really bad, but it's fine to sink a week into something that's going to flop sometimes, right? All right. Well, that's all I got for you guys. I really appreciate you watching and yeah, I uh, hope you'll stick around this channel for more videos, a lot more to come about code and tech and tutorials and all those things. All right, Matt out. Peace guys. Thank you to all my patrons. It really does make a huge difference as the YouTube ecosystem is somewhat dying for these uh, tutorials, N not dying in a good way, dying in a bad way. Isn't it weird how uh, ill and 
sick and all these words have opposite meanings it's really confusing anyway yeah um even though my channel is doing better and better uh the the revenue from ads is going down and down so yeah, i would really appreciate it if you would help me out on patreon and get the benefits that you get there it makes a huge difference for me and uh, continuing to make these videos